Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are covering part two in our weight loss series with the lovely Dr. Catherine Vermeerlin. Last week I published part one, which was related to the series as well. And if you haven't watched that, please watch that video first before you watch this video as they do follow on one another. This series will cover the question of why are you not losing weight despite doing everything? What are the hidden reasons blocking your weight loss attempts? Catherine, welcome to the studio. Thank you for being here again. Thank you, Claire. Thanks for having me again. I'm so excited to be part of the second video. And thank you for sharing your fountain of knowledge with all of us. Thank you. Catherine, so can you just give us a quick explanation, introduction to, to you and what it is that you do? I come from a medical professional background. I went into functional medicine. I'm specifically interested in weight loss because of my own health journey. So you managed to lose a lot of weight by following holistic principles. If you, if you can just tell us briefly, you struggled to lose the weight using conventional methods and you eventually found the way to lose weight going from 130 kilograms to somewhere in the 60s. Yes, that's correct. I think the holistic way is the way that it will be kept off the weight. Yes. You know, that's kind of the importance of this is to give you the fundamentals of how to lose weight successfully, but also how to keep it off. Brilliant. And a lot of women do come and see you to lose weight after they've tried everything else? Correct. Catherine, last week we spoke about the importance of gut health for weight loss. What are we going to be speaking about today? Today we're really going to follow up with the role of hormones mm -hmm. and also the role of our liver function. Catherine, so what does our livers have to do with our ability to lose weight? Well, it's our biggest detoxification organ that we have. Mm -hmm. It's responsible for taking toxins out of the body. Mm -hmm. So if it's not working mm -hmm. and it's um, not doing its processes, it's going to store toxic waste into fat. That sounds terrible. Yes. What are the signs that someone could be sitting with a very toxic liver? Cellulite, mm -hmm. really dull eyes, you know, we want the white sparkly eye, mm -hmm. skin issues, breakouts, rashes, itching, itching, bloating, hives, hives in some severe cases, absolutely. Is there an actual test that we can do to check on our liver functions? We can do a blood test where we can look at every single part of your liver and we can really assess its functionality. Catherine, are there any particular ways in which we can reduce the toxic load on our livers? Biggest one is alcohol. Let's just reduce alcohol, guys. I mean, reduce processed foods. Try to reduce store-bought vegetables that aren't organic. Um, try to reduce chemicals from food is really the point. Yes, and from products. And from products. Now on the note of alcohol, because I know I don't want you guys to exit this video and stop watching because you can't deal with giving up alcohol. <laughs> If you are going to want to have some alcohol in your life to deal with the daily struggle of life, what is it that you would recommend that people drink? I would recommend whiskey. People think it's a hard liquor, so they try to stay away from mm -hmm. it. But it's actually a very digestible liquor. What else? Low sulfur red wine, preferably organic. What are the things we can add into our diets to help aid liver recovery? apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. you know, on your salads, just take a tablespoon in a little bit of water, ginger, you know, freshly squeezed ginger, or just slice up some ginger in a cup of tea. We can also add some beetroot and carrots, uh, either to eat or to juice. Are they very good for your liver? Really good for your liver. Very high in antioxidants. You can definitely go for a milk thistle, a good quality milk thistle. What else can we add to our diet? Is there something you can drink every morning that will help your liver cleanse itself? A good green juice. I really would say uh, a green juice without any apple. So Catherine, is it as simple as that to cleanse and detoxify your liver? I want to say yes, Claire, but definitely not. Those are good tips and that can get one started, yes. uh, at least into some kind of regime. Yes. But I would really opt for someone to get their liver tested, come and see a professional mm -hmm. like myself or, or someone else and, and really start a full on liver detox program with a professional that could really help you to make some lasting changes. Absolutely. We mentioned at the outset of this video that besides gut health, the two important factors in dealing with weight loss resistance are liver toxicity and hormonal imbalances. 
We have now spoken about liver toxicity and are now moving on to hormonal balance. Why did we first speak about the liver before getting to the hormones? That's a good point and I think something that we need to explain to our audience. The liver is responsible for the balancing of hormones. If your liver is not functioning well, hormones are out of whack. Hormones are out of whack. So now moving on to the topic of hormones. Why is hormonal health or hormonal balance so important when it comes to our ability to lose weight? I think two biggest culprits for, for, for women struggling to lose weight is the DHEA and cortisol levels in their body as well as the estrogen levels in their body. So let's first talk about the DHEA cortisol hormonal picture. Why does that impact weight loss? It's affected by our stress management. Most importantly when it comes to weight loss is mm. the fact that it retains. The lower the cortisol levels, the more your body will hold on to what you already have. Like what? Like food? Like transit, food in your colon, fat on your, on your body, water. It really it retains everything. If you're stressed, everything comes to a grinding halt. Correct. And your body is like almost going into its shell. Yes. Isn't that a nice way of putting it? Like a little tortoise going into yes. its shell and then just oh, holding... It going back in its little crack. And then know? holding on yeah. for dear life. Yes. Okay, and then let's talk about estrogen dominance. Why does too much estrogen mm. cause a problem losing weight? High estrogen really retains. So it retains fluid, um, it retains fat in the body. It's almost like it's almost like your body is being hugged. What are the signs if someone is watching this and they're wondering, are my hormones out of whack? What are the signs that you might have a serious hormonal imbalance in your body? To narrow it down, low libido, low sex drive, sleeplessness anxiety, fatigue, skin breakouts, hair thinning, brittle nails. Is there a test one can do to check whether your hormones are out of balance? We can definitely do a blood test to see where you are at. So it's a short and easy thing? Short and easy. So to fix your hormones or get them back into balance, what are the steps that we can take? Watch our first video, get your gut in order, detoxify your liver, you know, see someone if you need to, get your liver right, mm. which would at least if not fix, just at least bring your hormones to some kind of balance that could promote you to lose your weight. So you're saying that you will not get your hormones into balance if you do not fix your gut and if you do not detoxify your liver. Yes. Once you've taken the steps to repair your gut health and properly detoxify your liver, which will most probably have to happen in conjunction with a specialist practitioner like yourself, because it is a very complicated process, yes even though we've given some tips and tricks to get started, you're saying that your hormones will be on a much better path, but might still then not be perfectly balanced. And that is something that might require further exploration. Definitely, Claire. But I also would say that once you've started on your gut and your liver, you already are in quite an advancement towards balancing your hormones than where you were before. And Catherine, we've now pretty much outlined the importance of liver health and hormonal health, especially as it pertains to weight loss. And we've only scratched the surface, guys. But is there anything else from a lifestyle perspective that is relatively easy to implement that people can start thinking about when it comes to improving both of these things? Good point. Bear in mind um, that there's quite a lot of hormones added to our foods. A lot. We just need to be aware. Mm. Um, make better choices. Try to find better sources for your food. Yes. The second point is to look at your cosmetic products. Mm. Uh, cosmetics uh, these days, you can't even pronounce some of the names that are on the ingredient list. You don't even know what, it's, what it is. Exactly. Nor are you going to find time to actually go and research all of those to know what it's doing to your body. Yes, so try to go as organic and clean as possible, possible when it comes to your food and when it comes to your skin products because all of that stuff that you either are eating or putting on your skin is going into your system. What about household products? That's something that I try to really keep clean and non-toxic for the sake of my liver and my hormones and my general health. Absolutely. Definitely a good point. Most of our household products are very toxic. If people do want to know more about a full and comprehensive liver detox program and what that looks like, is there a place they can go to for more information on that? 
Yes, Claire, definitely. And I think it's so great to have a source where you can read up on these things and just inform yourself. You can definitely go to my website. My website is www.body-rejuvenate.com and just go under services, under liver detox and just go and have a read there and inform yourself. Now that we've discussed what the hidden or not so obvious reasons are that people are struggling to lose weight, can you just finish this conversation by giving us some more obvious pointers that people must and can do to complete the weight loss journey? Drink enough water. Definitely up your water intake. You know, add a little bit of lemon juice in there with a shot of apple cider vinegar. Make your water a little bit more exciting. Try to have either your biggest meal around breakfast or lunch. It's important to have breakfast. We have so many intermittent fasters these days, very popular. But another topic. Another topic, but very important to have your biggest meal not in the evening. Try not to eat your fruit after two o'clock. You don't want the sugar load after two. Try to keep your blood sugar as stable as possible. Let's try to have smaller meals during the course of the day instead of big meals at meal times. And then often you overeat because you're too hungry, you've yes. waited too long. Absolutely. Catherine, should someone want to get in touch with you and book a slot in that jam-packed diary of yours, how do they get in touch? Go to my website. It's at www.body-rejuvenate.com and all of our contact details you'll be able to find on there. Now guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to be notified as soon as we post more videos, which will be once a week. And let us know in the comments down below if there's any further topics that you would like me and Catherine to cover next. And we will gladly do so. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.